Upheaval, Reckoning, Chapter 52, The Last Born Defeated by a slovenly gang of mortals, have you no shame at all, Riddentum? How are we supposed to make our stand in this world now? It was difficult for Luna to grasp the emotion behind Fulman Lancia's words. There was genuine scorn in there. None of Gravitas's troops had bothered hiding their disdain for mortals, for Alicorns who prided themselves as soldiers of the herd and the best among Gravitas's loyal followers, being defeated by those they considered their lessers had to be shameful. It was the second question that added something else to Fulman's reaction. There was more to this than scorn. There was also frustration, perhaps even a sense of loss. Ridden Tim was recovering in the eternal hurt by now. He would never be able to cross into this world again. The two would never be able to band together against Oceanus's titans this world. Luna quashed any sense of sadness she might have felt. Ridden Tim brought his defeat upon himself by attacking mortals without any provocation and for not taking them seriously. The wisps of magical energy emerging from Ridden Tim's torn half mixed with the glow of Fulman's horn. Luna didn't need her brother's expertise to identify basic necromancy. She thought of flying in to interrupt, but Fulman wasn't distracted. All she would accomplish would be to charge into a readied spear. The spell was over in a few more seconds. She braced herself, a few spells of her own ready for whatever Fulman did. Arcs of golden electricity coursed through Fulman Lancia, surging violently into the ground and lashing at the air menacingly. Luna blinked. Were her eyes playing tricks or was he... growing? Celestia hovered next to Luna, her blade of light by her side. She looked over to Twilight and the others as they regrouped at a distance. It was easy to see the pride in her eyes. They've done their part. It falls to us to finish this. That's easy to say, big sister, Luna replied. It seems to me that the enemy we were hard-pressed to begin with just became stronger. Stronger, perhaps, Celestia said. But also angrier. We can use that to our advantage. Celestia was right on both accounts. Twilight Sparkle and her friends had done well in bringing down Renantum Maleorum, but to expect more from them for this time would be unreasonable. They gathered around Fluttershy, who was lying still on the ground. Their injured friend required healing, at least attention for the moment. The rest of them had not escaped the fight unscathed. That left just her and her sister. With Celestia... A stroke of lightning flew from the tip of Fulman's spear. With a gasp, Luna raised the shield at the last moment. The bolt tore violently through the barrier, narrowly missing her back as she dove. She felt every hair on her body stand and the skin on her back singe with the bolt's passing. The bolt may have struck through her hastily constructed spell, but it had been diffused enough. A powerful shockwave of sound followed it, hurling her to the ground with a deafening boom. She struck the frozen earth's hoofs first, skidding briefly before she righted herself. She looked up and jumped backwards just as a massive spear struck the ground she had been standing on. Luna! Celestia dove in when it became clear that Fulman was focused on her sister. She aimed for the now enlarged gaps between the bronze plates of her target's armor. Fulman Lancia, despite having grown to three times the size of his partner, had not lost the slightest amount of his reflexes. He whipped his spear around, tearing a great gash into the earth itself and nearly slammed the metal haft into Celestia. The blade of light flew towards the gap between Fulman's neck plates and his champron, but he was already several steps back and aiming his spear before it could get there. With a snort, Celestia flew back. Luna flew in while her sister recovered. Fulman had the advantage in range, not just with his extended reach and long weapon, but also with his lightning bolts. The ground rumbled when he landed and took steps. All it would take from him was one good hit. Even a glancing blow would severely injure her. Her horn glowed anew. His eyes may have grown, but they worked the same way they did when he was smaller. The danger had merely increased. The strategy only needed some adjustments. Several shadows emerged from her again. 
their blades weren't going to hurt Fulman as they had earlier, but it should buy her and her sister some time. Luna brought out a dozen shadow clones. Fulman's answer was a bolt of lightning with just as many forks. They struck with perfect accuracy, destroying the illusions before they could barely even separate. The explosive shock waves forced Luna to raise her shield again. Charts of rock struck the protective magic as she flew back. She looked around worriedly, hoping that Celestia didn't get hurt by that barrage. Have you exhausted your little bag of tricks, lastborn? Fulman Lancer said. His voice deep and powerful enough at his regular size boomed from his champion. I hope not. I have a storm at my spear's tip still waiting to be unleashed and I'd like a moving target. Oh, a storm, is it? Luna replied. I hope it has more wind than your fat friend's hooting. It was difficult to tell if her taunts had any effect. Though Fullman should be angrier now, his movements were still precise and controlled. Luna finally caught sight of her sister. Celestia had fallen a good distance behind her. Other than a few banged up portions on her balding and the pants of exertion, her sister looked fine. She considered her next move. She had underestimated just how well Fulman Lancia wielded his lightning bolts. Simple illusionary tricks weren't going to be effective, not when he was done underestimating her. If only she could tear through that shield he had around his mind. She glanced toward Celestia again, wishing she had her sister's talent for dispelling. At full strength, Celestia would have dismantled that mind shield with practiced ease. She waited until Fulman pointed his spear at her again before casting her spell. Like a massive glob of ink, darkness descended on Fulman Lancia. Several arcs of lightning erupted from the resulting globe, but Luna easily dodged the blind strikes. The sound of Fulman flapping his wings emerged from the darkness, but the globe clung to him like a sticky cloud. No additional bolts flew. The initial shock had already worn off and Fulman was either working to dispel her magic or pinpoint her location. She already worked on the next spell, expertly weaving thicker strands of shadowy material in the air with her horn. If her darkness globe resembled smoke in its texture, these strands were more like tar. She sent them gliding towards her foe. Though she couldn't see Fulman in her darkness, she didn't have to. The globe of darkness dissipated, revealing Fulman Lancer trapped by the shadowy strands and anchored to the ground beneath like a moth in a spider's web. The wind from his furious flapping steered up clouds of snow and dust, but the strands held on. A burst of lightning erupted from his horn, but they simply crackled through the shadows harmlessly. With her enemy trapped, Luna focused on a third spell. In the next second, Fulman's spear was only a foot away from Luna. With a gasp, she raised a shield and flew to the side. Fulman's massive weapon shattered her abjuration like so much glass and tore through her barding. Shards of bloody silver fell as hurt forged metal gashed her just beneath her right wing. Luna winced and spun in mid-air, desperately trying to right herself before the next attack came. All that remained of her shadow strands were bits of goo. Divination to negate the illusory aspect of the spell and a touch of abjuration to disperse the shadowy material, Fulman said. He hovered just above Luna. That he didn't follow up with another attack filled her with outrage. The correct combination would have taken time to figure out if it was my first encounter with that tactic. It's not. During the first rebellion, one of the firstborn's handmaidens used it on me. You may recognize the name. Luna Lux Umbra. Luna's eyes grit her teeth at the hinting. Surprised? Fulman asked. Of course you are. You sixteenth cycle alicorns act as if the world only began when you first opened your eyes. Your inexperience shows yet again, last born. Luna's magic closed her wound to her side. Here was a dangerous cycle she had to avoid. Healing spells depleted her magical strength and depleted magical strength meant that she had less power to prevent more wounds. For now, she could afford to ease the pain and save her blood, but more wounds from the giant, lightning-infused spear were definitely out of the question. Fulman Lancia landed on the ground and crouched. With his powerful legs and wings to boost him, he could charge at blinding speeds. I'm sensing a lot of hostility with that last remark, Fulman, Luna said. 
Is that what this is all about? You don't like the decisions that the young ones are making? Fulman turned around and swung his spear at Celestia, who had been gliding silently towards his left side for an attack. She turned at the last moment, but the heft struck her a glancing blow. Celestia's wing snapped as she crashed. Big sister! Luna cried out. She had taken only a step forward when Fulman already had his spear pointing at her. Lightning surged violently, gouging a smoking trail across the ground and towards Luna. When she flew to the side, a smaller arc branched out from the main bolt and struck her chest plate. Despite the intense pain, Luna couldn't cry out. Her throat seized up and her legs buckled as the energy coursed through her. The smell of her own fur smoking wafted to her face as she crashed to the ground. Distraction followed by a blindsiding attack, Fullman said. He had not even moved from the spot, but his hoofs had formed a circular pattern from spinning around. Nothing new, nothing special. I'm starting to feel insulted, last born. The vestiges of Ridentum's power should not be used to finish off something so pitiful. Luna dragged herself to her hoofs. Her legs were shook as she fought through the nausea induced by the smell of her own burnt flesh. She focused on healing the worst of the damage first. Even as she did that, she searched for her fallen sister, all the while keeping Fulman Lancia in her sight. But I forget my manners before a princess, Fulman said. His monotone did little to hide the mockery in his words. To answer your question, that would be a part of it. I am a twelfth cycle alicorn, your highness. Soon I will be diminished. Before that happens, I want to make sure that there is something resembling my beloved eternal hurt when I'm restored. The mortals don't want to ruin the hurt, Celestia said as she struggled to rise. Her wing hung from her side at an unnatural angle. What is it that has you and Gravita so convinced that they will? Idealistic filly, Fulman replied. He hadn't crouched for another charge. Once more, his refusal to follow up his attacks galled Luna. His attacks, however, were becoming more and more precise. The first one barely grazed her, the second struck her with a secondary bolt. The third one was going to be a direct hit. You wouldn't know. Our fallen have what convinces us. We watched as the firstborn tore down the best among us and remade them in his image. The monotone wavered. The very best the herd has to offer. If they can fall, what hope do these fragile creatures have? Fulman turned his gaze on Luna. You understand it better, don't you, last born? You know the unbreakable bond that ties those who have given themselves over to Oceanus. You know that there's no hope for the mortals here in this world. Thus the need to censor you and seal your way until Oceanus is defeated once and for all. Silence followed after that, a deathly silence that drowned out even the distant sounds of battle that should be coming from Gravitas, Terrado and Black Rose. Luna could feel her sister's worried gaze on her, half afraid of whether it would affect her and half afraid that it might be true. This soldier, he had a lot of nerve to speak of it. He had a lot of nerve to even speak at all. What do you know of me, Tool? She asked, her voice turning into a fierce hiss. What does a glorified puppet who takes pride in being told what to do by others know of what I've done? Another bolt of lightning flew. The aim and timing was perfect. Its main body struck Luna and flung her across the ground. As electricity violently surged through her body, her healing magic surged back with equal ferocity. Flesh mended as quickly as it burned up. When the lightning bolt had expanded itself, Luna was standing upright and unharmed in the middle of a charred patch of ground. Sections of her barding had melted from the attack, but she didn't mind them, even if some of the silvery material had fused to her coat. Bold and reckless, Fulman said. Did I hit a nerve, last born? You think you can outheal every attack I make and expect not to tire first? I hate it, my sister, Luna said. I hate it, prima regia pulea, filia solis, second born, eldest daughter, dearest sister. Neither Oceanus nor Umbra forced me to feel that way. Don't talk to me about not being able to resist. I had every chance to refuse and I turned them all away. Luna, Celestia called out. 
Don't let him bait you into head-on combat. Play to your strength. And what do you know of my strength? Tendrils of dark blue magic crept up and down her horn. Scorn radiated from Fullman's casual stance. He recognized the phantasm spell and he was confident in his mind shielding. Luna pointed her horn not towards Fullman but towards her sister. Celestia's eyes widened. Luna, what? I'm sorry, sister, Luna thought. I cannot challenge his mind's shielding as it is, but I also don't need to to know what he fears the most. I just need a memory to base the illusion on. It doesn't have to be his. The message was not telepathic. Luna couldn't afford to work on that spell in the midst of her illusion weaving. It was empathic, and the confirmation in Celestia's eyes showed that she understood. Illusion and enchantment were traditionally compatible domains of magic. No proof of that was greater than the existence of phantasms, spells that cut into their subject's subconscious, exposed their darkest fears and custom-crafted illusions out of them. But phantasms were limited by their specificity. A traditional phantasm crafted from Celestia's mind could only be seen by Celestia. Every pony else would just see vague, hazy images. That was the line that Luna had to manipulate. She had a good idea of the fear her sister shared with this arrogant soldier. A phantasm would pull the image out, but she had to construct it through figments and glamours. Fixing and matching illusions at this critical moment was dangerous and, if she blew the spell up in front of Fullman, she wouldn't survive the humiliation even if she did live through the fight. Fortunately and infuriatingly, Fullman Lancia was still not attacking. Perhaps he was so confident in his defense that he waited for the chance to counter and further humiliate his opponent. Perhaps it was simply astonishing to see his opponents, supposed close sisters at that, suddenly turn on each other. He may even believe that Luna was doing this to curry favor from Gravitas and reduce her sentence. The exact reason didn't matter, only that he was going to regret it. Luna held her breath as she carefully sifted through her sister's mind. At her full strength, the shielding around Celestia's mind would have been nigh impenetrable. Her sister would violently eject her with an extra dose of smiting to discourage repeated attempts. That Celestia was willing to go through with this with barely a flinch, even without that security, showed a trust that Luna was determined to prove well-founded. Even with the care she moved with, it didn't take long for her to find what she was looking for. Though she had heard the tales, seen some of the damage he had wrought when he tore a trail across Equestria and towards the Eternal Herd's throne, Luna had never seen Oceanus face to face. This wasn't true for her sister. Celestia had seen Oceanus, known him for a time, likely known him better than any pony else. Luna unleashed the next part of her spell, a globe of darkness descending once more. Not upon Fullman, but upon her. Hidden temporarily, she began to gap herself. Her sister's memories of the firstborn were strong. That easily proved useful. She needed more than an image to form a powerful enough illusion. She needed scents, sounds, tactile sensations and specific actions. The abundance of these sensations quickly proved frightening. The temptation to go through each incident tucked at her, but she vehemently rejected them. She had what she had come for, and it was only right to withdraw as soon as possible. That's enough paltry tricks, Fullman said. The darkness around her scattered like smoke, blown away like a gale. In a blink, Fullman was already upon her, the tip of his spear a mere foot from her neck. His reaction as soon as he noticed her form was one of relish for a while. Fullman Lancia halted in his tracks. The powerful surges of lightning crackled all around him disappeared. It wasn't just him. Celestia stared, wide-eyed and gaping. A burst of shadowy strands flew from Luna's horn, smothering Fullman's spear-like tie and pushing it, along with him, backwards. He crashed to the ground and tangled with the same shadowy strands as earlier. His remedy was not at the tip of his horn, however. Insolent hoof soldier, you will suffer for standing before me. The voice was pitch perfect, harsh like a frigid wind and controlled with an obsessive, exacting hold. Luna's own experiences made sure of that. She spoke with the firstborn's voice and stared coldly with the firstborn's eyes. 
Oceanus never raised his voice, never hurried his step, and never showed a face that he didn't want you to see. Perfect. Celestia had seen him in the past. Unfeeling, Luna saw him. She would have never gotten along with the firstborn if she had met him during his time in the herd. As for appearances, it was his silvery wings that she flapped and it was his shimmering mane of water that flowed all around her. There was no need to account for whatever form Oceanus now had while he resided in his realm of watery darkness. It was this form that ravaged the eternal herd during the first rebellion. Every witness made it clear enough. This is the awful truth that the firstborn showed you, wasn't it? She thought. The firstborn showed you that we are not as high and mighty that you and Gravitas so desperately wish we are. That's why you keep taking it out on the mortals. That's why you are so terrified of any advantage the firstborn might gain. Luna unsheathed a translucent ice-blue blade, enjoying the sight of Fulman quailing as she did so. A cry from her sister brought her up short. Celestia was staring at the blade in frozen panic, clutching at her right eye as if she had been struck. This form was born of a shared fear between Celestia and all of those who had met the firstborn personally. Luna focused on Fulman's mind shield. His will wavered. Without a strong will to support it, even the mightiest shield collapsed easily. She abandoned her illusionary form and began to dispel it. She didn't need her sister's finesse at this point. She ripped the shielding apart like a filly with a housewarming Eve present, finally exposing the soft, vulnerable psyche hiding behind it. The cry of panic from Fulman signaled victory. Luna breathed in the rush of triumph, savored it above everything else at the moment, then plunged in with her most vicious, true phantasms. She had no compunction about looking this time. The sight of this brave soldier, so willing to exterminate others without hesitation, so arrogant in executing her, weeping in fear should be vindicating. She flooded his senses with illusion magic and plunged him deep into a darkness crafted only for him. These visions are false, Fulman shouted as defiantly as he could. The fear that gripped his voice choked the defiance out quickly. Luna paid no attention to his disbelief. Recognition alone did not always stop illusions, especially when the fear they evoked was carved so deeply into the mind and body. Out of the darkness, hundreds of mortal hoofs clung to Fulman. Tiny glowing eyes surrounded him like a sea of stars. He tried to beat them back, but the morass of limbs and eyes clung to him tightly, ignoring his flailing spear and hoofs. He fired a lightning bolt, but all that came out was a feeble spark that fizzled against the abyss all around him. Stop these lies, he shouted. Lastborn, I know you're out there. There's nothing false about what you're seeing. An elecon stallion emerged from the darkness. This one would have been around Celestia's height. He was muscular but sleek. It was difficult to make out the color of his coat as he appeared to be splattered with black ink. His silvery balding was rent in many places. Some of the metal was barely hanging on him. His mane came out as a thick wisp of crimson vapor. One of his wings was a crumbled, mangled mess that hung limply by his side. Gladio Lupus. Fulman said. It sounded almost like a whisper. The best among us, he had said earlier. Perhaps it was this pony he meant. I thought I told you that I'm using a different name now. Abyssus Batiator. Use it or call me not at all. Why are you here? Fulman asked. You cannot stop this tight, Fulman. Nothing can. It's just as he promised at that time. Those who will not kneel will be dragged down to the depths. The myriad of hoofs and teeth clutching at Fulman pulled harder, dragging him deeper into the screeching, wailing mass of... things. The only things visible were the sharp teeth and the countless shining eyes. His screams were elating. This fight was over. At this point, Luna was merely exacting revenge. That's a problem with your earlier cycle, Alicorns, she whispered. You live through one ascension and you act like you've seen everything. 
The blackness swallowed Fulman completely, but his long, drawn-out screams still filled Luna's ears. That's right, she shouted back. Fall into the abyss you are so scared of. Scream, fall and... Luna! The powerful voice, Celestia's version of the so-called Royal Cantalot voice, dispersed the darkness. The next thing Luna knew she was back in Sky Mirror Lake. With a gasp, she pulled out of the last vestiges of the phantasm. In front of her was Fulman Lancia, no longer a giant and curled into a shaking, screaming ball. Celestia stood across her, eyes narrow and angry. Big sister, she started. Gratia in Victoria. Celestia looked at Fulman and then sternly back at Luna. What had to be done was clear enough. Luna raised her false regalia and slashed as hard as she could, all but severing Fulman's head. A flash of light erupted from the fallen Ericon's eyes and mouth briefly. Pint yet, she whispered. She stepped back and looked away from the body. The elation of beating Fulman was gone. Only shame was left. She couldn't even look her sister in the eye. It is not me you have harmed, Celestia said. This is your victory you would have spoiled. Her voice softened. You picked a clever way to defeat his mind-shielding, little sister. Thank you for being careful. A small smile crescent Luna's lips. Before she would say anything else, however, she remembered that there was one more foe to take care of. She searched the skies around them. They had flown quite a distance from where they started fighting, but she should still catch a glimpse of her brother and his treacherous student. The sky was perfectly clear and silent. Okay, here are my thoughts on this chapter. We finally see what Luna can do and that underestimating her is a big mistake. Um, to be blunt, I wouldn't fight Luna now, no, now that I know her abilities. I mean, going into your mind and uh, creating illusions that resemble your greatest fears to defeat you. And she... um made that uh, proud soldier into a crying ball. Uh, I mean, he curled up and was crying and in fear and such. And, oh my God, um, yeah. Um, she was definitely underestimated here. And as I predicted, it was Luna who had to deal the killing blow. She um, defeated him smartly, I think. She used his greatest fear against him, Oceanus. That was interesting, seriously. And, yeah, not trying to break his mind's, uh, his mind's shielding, but instead taking the image from Celestia's mind was quick thinking. She did a good job, even though at the end there she was, how to put this, slipping? I mean, we already know that she still has some kind of uh, connection to Oceanus if we think back to that time when she was reading Clover the Clever's journal and the spell that Clover the Clever had created to siphon power from Oceanus. Um, I'm looking forward where this is going, but I hope that Luna will stay at Celestia's side and uh, that she will be able to refuse... Oceanus's influence this time. Sincerely, yours, Visual Pony, and I'm looking forward to your opinions as always.